Hey, Drew. Oh, hey. Can you help us build a bike? Sure, I can. So what are we building today? Today, we're going to unbox and assemble a Schwen e-bike. Tools needed for assembly include three, four, five, and six millimeter hex keys, a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, a box cutter, cable cutter, or scissors, and a pedal wrench or adjustable wrench. Locate the zip strip tab at the top corner of the box. Pull the tab all the way across the box, then open the box top. Remove the entire bike from the box and set it on top of the box. Before you start removing packaging, identify these wires. Located here and here, near your handlebars. Here, under the bike, behind the front chain ring. And here, along the chain stay, near the rear wheel. Snip off the straps holding the front wheel to the bike and remove all additional packaging from the wheel. Remove the packaging from the rest of the bicycle, taking care not to cut any of the wires Drew identified earlier. Leave the fork spacer in for now. Lift the bicycle and set the rear wheel in the box with the fork hanging over the side. Gently place the handlebar at the front of the bike. Next, we'll install the stem and handlebar. Use a four millimeter hex wrench to loosen the four bolts securing the stem face plate and remove the face plate. Set the face plate and bolts in a safe place where nothing will be lost. Place the handlebar in the stem and verify the brake and shift cables wrap around the frame without kinks or twisting. Reinstall the stem face plate, but don't tighten the bolts yet. Center the handlebar in the stem using the markings on the handlebar. Rotate the handlebar to a comfortable position with the brake levers pointing down slightly. Next, evenly tighten the four millimeter faceplate bolts in a crisscross pattern. Ensure the gap between the faceplate and stem is equal all the way around the stem. Locate three sets of color-coded wires at the front of the bike. Connect the cables from the handlebar to the corresponding colored cables at the head tube or front of the bicycle. Simply line up the arrows on the plugs and press together. The colored portion of the plugs should disappear when they are properly connected. Slide the controller into place on the left side of the handlebar. Rotate the controller into position, then use a 3mm hex key to tighten the bolt securing the controller to the handlebar. Next, we'll install the seat post. Open the quick release lever, then slide the seat post into the frame. Ensure the seat post is inserted past the minimum insertion line marked on the post. Close the seat post quick release lever. Lift the bike out of the box and set it on the ground standing straight up. Next, we'll install the front fender, light, and wheel. Loosen and remove the bolt at the fork crown. Pull the fender through the fork from the rear with one hand. Use your other hand to bring the front light up so its mounting tab meets up with the front fender mounting tab at the hole in the fork crown. While holding the light in place with the fender tab, reinstall the bolt in the fork crown. The order should be fork crown, light mount, fender mount, then the bolt head. Align the light and fender with the fork, then tighten the bolt with the screwdriver. Adjust the front light so it points straight ahead. Next. Secure the fender struts to the middle of each fork leg. Remove the left side bolt, then place the fender strut over the bolt hole and reinstall the bolt. Tighten the bolt with a screwdriver. Repeat this process on the right side of the fork.
Inside your bike box, you'll find a box of small bike parts, as well as your owner's manual. You want to read this before you ride. Open the parts box and locate the quick release skewer. Set the pedals aside for now. On the quick release, there should be an adjusting nut, two springs, and the quick release lever. Remove the adjusting nut and one spring. Remove any packaging from the axle, then insert the quick release skewer through the front wheel axle from the side opposite the brake disc. Reinstall the spring, narrow end first, and lightly tighten the adjusting nut. The order on the axle should be adjusting nut, spring, wheel, the second spring, then the quick release lever. With your foot, remove the fork spacer at the dropouts. To install the front wheel, lift the front of the bike and roll the wheel back, ensuring the brake disc goes into the brake caliper. Then lower the fork dropouts onto the axle. Slowly tighten the adjusting nut, then close the quick release lever to see if it's tight enough. If it's too loose, open the lever, tighten up the nut more, then close the quick release lever. The quick release is properly tight when it requires a lot of effort to close the lever, and the lever leaves a mark on your hand. Pedals are side specific, a right and a left. Just check the sticker. The right hand side has the gear and the chain. And always remember, thread in the direction of the front wheel. Install the right pedal, threading in the direction of the front wheel. Then use a pedal wrench or adjustable wrench to fully tighten. Repeat this process on the left side, and always remember to tighten in the direction of the front wheel. Both pedals should be very tight. Rotate the front reflector so it points straight forward, then tighten the bolt to secure it. Ensure the wheel reflectors are snug by pulling them toward the rim. Use a four millimeter hex key to fully tighten the stem bolts in a crisscross pattern. Verify the gap between the stem and faceplate is even from top to bottom and side to side. Use a hex key to evenly tighten the two bolts securing the stem to the fork. Straddle the front wheel and attempt to twist the bars to make sure they don't twist. Vigorously rock and twist the saddle back and forth to ensure it doesn't move while you're riding. Open the seat post quick release, then raise the saddle to approximately hip level. Close the quick release lever. At your correct seat height, your knee should have a slight bend in it at the bottom of the pedal stroke. Check that the brakes work by rolling back and forth slightly, then squeezing the brake levers to verify they grip. Ensure the brake levers don't pull back too far. There should be a gap between the lever and grip with the brake applied. Verify the front wheel quick release is tight. The lever should be hard to close, leaving a mark on the palm of your hand. Inflate the tires to the manufacturer's recommended pressure, which is marked on the tire sidewall. Press the power button at the bottom of the battery pack to power on the electric drive system. Next, press and hold the center on button on the controller until the display appears. Use the top plus button to increase the assist level, or the bottom minus button to decrease the level of assist. The center button on the controller scrolls through the ride statistics, including time, trip distance, average speed, and maximum speed. Hold the center button down for two seconds to power down the controller. Also in your bike box is your charger. You can charge your battery on or off the bike. To charge the battery on the bike, open the charge port cover on the lower left side of the frame. You will see the charge level displayed on the LEDs near the power button on the battery. Cut the zip tie securing the keys to the handlebar. To remove the battery, insert the key into the keyhole at the upper left side of the frame near the head tube. Turn the key, then press the button at the top of the battery to release it from the frame. To charge the battery, insert the charging cable into the battery charge port. The charge level will appear on the LEDs near the power button. To reinstall the battery, place the bottom edge of the battery into the frame, then lift up the upper portion of the battery into place. When properly installed, it will click into place. And that's it. Grab your helmet 
and hit the streets full throttle. Thanks, Drew. Have a great ride.